Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today we'll talk about percentage change formula, a very crucial concept, very important concept if you're going to prepare for any of these tests, ACT, SAT, TES, GMAT, or GRE. This appears in all the exams, knowing how to figure out the percentage changes from the figures that are given to us. A percentage change formula, percentage change formula looks something like this. Percentage, first of all, this symbol right here, we're going to use this all the time, just make sure you're familiar with it. It is, it is a Greek letter, it is a Greek letter, it is a Greek letter delta, and it stands for stands for change. Traditionally, this is how we represent the notion of change in mathematics with the Greek letter delta. This is a capital letter D. Just like in English we have capital letter and, and a small letter. Just like that in the Greek, this is the capital letter and this is the small letter. You will see this small, small letter delta in like the calculus books. We are not going to use here a small letter, we will use the capital letter. D for delta, which stands for change. Percentage change, percentage change is equal to the change divided by the old number times 100. That's what it is. That's all we need to know. Now the question is, how do we define our change? How do we define our change? Change is defined as, change is defined as new number minus, new number minus the or number. That's how we define the change. Keep that in mind. For example, let's look at let's take a look at an example. For example, uh, for example, going from going from 100 to 150. Going from 100 to 150. Let's put these. Let's put this here. Letter D. Letter D and small letter D. This is a capital letter D and this is a small letter D. Notice the resemblance between the English D right here and the, and the Greek letter small d. Going from 100 to 150, if I, if I, used, to make, if I used to make $100 a week in my salary and now I've gotten a raise and now I make $150 a week, well that's pretty straightforward. Going from 100 to 150, that's an increase of 50%. That's an increase of 50%. Everybody knows that it's 50% because it went up by half. But what happens? What happens if we go from but going from going from 150 to 100? Going from 150 to 100 is 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 not a decrease of 50%. It is not a decrease of 50%. How, how much is it going from 100, 150 to 100? If, if, uh, if, uh, if we had, uh, if, if, if we had 150 people in the room and 50 people left the room and now we have 100 people, going from 100 to 100 is not a, it's not a drop of 50%. Going from 100 to 150 is an increase of 50%, but going from 150 to 100 is not. It's not a drop of 50%. Well, then how much is it? This formula is going to give us the answer. This formula is going to give us the answer. Let's do it here. So the formula tells us that the percentage change, percentage change is equal to the change, which is new minus the old over the old times 100. New minus the old over the old times 100. So let's do it here. The new number, the new number, is very important that you keep track of your starting point and your ending point. This is where people make mistakes. Going from, we are going from, we are going from 150 to 100. To 100 means this is the final point. This is our starting point because we are going from 150. It tells us we take our new numbers, which is the number that we end up with, the final number, which is 100 minus the old number over the 100 over the old number over the old number 
which in this case is 100 because oh it's not it oh yeah it made a mistake I made a mistake myself all number the number that we started out with going from 150 this is what I mean by people make careless mistake this is exactly what I mean going we are going from 150 we're going from 150 since we're going from 150 this is our starting point this is our beginning that's our old number this is the old number this is the new number the final number is the new number going from part wherever you start out with this is the old number this is the old number that was wrong this is wrong old number is 150 not 100 times times 100 the 100 part that you see there at the end times 100 is just to con is just to be able to convert our decimal answer into a percentage answer if we didn't have times 100 you may end up with something like 0.35 well 0.35 is 35 percent and you're going to get 35 percent only if if you take your final answer and multiply by 100 if your final answer turns out to be 0.1 well 0.1 needs to be multiplied by 10, 100 to convert it into a 10 percent if your final answer happens to be 0.5, well, 0.5 is 50%. How do we go from 0.5 to 50%? By taking 0.5 and multiplying it by 100. That's what that's what this 100. That's the that's the purpose of this 100. That's what this this 100 serves. That that is the purpose that this 100 serves is to convert the decimal answer into a percentage answer. So that's what that is. Let's continue here. 100 minus 150, you see 100 minus 150 is going to be negative 50. This negative part tells us, this negative 5 part indicates that there has been a drop. Of course there has been a drop because we began with 150 and now we are at 100. There has been a drop, a drop of 50. A drop of 50 is indicated by this negative sign. Over 150 times 100. Let's divide, let's divide the uh, Let's divide top and bottom by. Let's divide top and bottom by 50. If we divide top and bottom by 50, 50 is going to go away. It's going to become one, and 150 has three 50s in it. So we end up with a negative times one with times 100. What can we do it? Let's continue here. So we end up with. So what we end up here is percentage change is. It was like this: negative 50 over. 150 times 100 divide top by one divide top and bottom by 50 and it becomes 3 and what we end up is negative 1 times 100 it's just 100 over 3 with the negative sign of it 100 divided by 3 is 33 percent 33.33 percent it's a drop of 33.33 percent it's a drop of 33.33 percent why is it a drop of 33.33% or if you like, or if you like, a drop of 33 and one third percent? And this is, this is the accurate answer. This is the exact answer. Minus a drop of 33 and a third percent. This is the, this is the accurate answer. This is the approximate answer. It's approximate because it, it, it doesn't stop at 0.33. It doesn't stop at 0.33, it goes on forever. It's 0.333 forever. It just goes on. If you write it like this, it now it's the exact answer. The question is why is it a drop of 33 and a third percent going from 150 to 100? Is if we just found out is a drop of 33 and one third percent, but going from 100 to 150 was an increase of 50. Why is there a difference in answer? The reason is that in both cases, listen carefully, in both cases, the change is the same. 100 to 150 is a change of 50. 150 to 100 is a change of 50. Of course, we understand that it's a negative 50, but it is, the point is, it is a change of 50. What is making a difference is that we are asking ourselves, how does this change compare with, now listen carefully, how does this change compare with, why well, I used to make, I used to make, for example, I used to make $20,000 before, now I'm making $22,000, I'm making $2,000 more. The question is, how does this change compare with with what well the logic dictates that the, you should finish the sentence by saying how does this comp change compare with what I used to make nobody sits nobody stands there and tells how does this compare how does this how, how does this change compare with what I'm making now it makes no change it, it, it makes no sense if you say that the population of if you say the population of town has gone up by 20,000 
if the population of the town has gone up by 20,000, 20,000 compared to what? It has gone up by 20,000 compared to what? Compared to what it used to be. Not what it is now. If you Makes sense, doesn't it? If you tell somebody that the population of my town has gone up by 20,000, well, the listener understands that it has gone up by 20,000 compared to some point of reference in the past, not what it is today. That's the difference here. It is a point of reference that is different in these two scenarios. When you go from 100 to 150, our point of reference is 100. This is our point of reference. Point of reference. Point of reference is what we call, point of reference is what we call the initial quantity. Initial quantity. The original number. The original number. The starting point. The starting point. You can call it anything you want. Or all number. You see, here I call it the old number. I, I turned, it just so happens that I did not call it any of these things. I call it simply the old number. Old number. Point of reference. Point of reference could be referred to in several different ways. Because it's not a standard terminology, it's just language. I can refer to my point of reference, the point that I started out with. That's the point of reference, isn't it? The point that you start out with. The point of reference, the point that you start out with, I can call it simply the old number. Hence the new number, the final number. I could simply refer to the starting point as the old number, or the original number, or the initial quantity, if I want to sound real cerebral. Or I can simply call it the starting point. Or, if you like, the point of reference. The point of reference in this scenario going from 100 to 150 is 100. And that, that 50, the change of 50 is being divided by, by 100. You see? The change of 50 is being divided in this scenario by 50. So here we have a change of 50 change of 50 which is being divided by 100 and it gives you half which is being multiplied by 100 and that half tells you that the difference is a, is a change of 50 percent but here the change is 50 the change is 50 right here the change is 50 the change is 50 but is divided by the point of reference which is 150 the point point of reference here is 150 and of course 50 divided by 150 is one third which makes perfect sense if you think about it which makes perfect sense what this is telling us what this is telling us is that if you have starting point of 150 and you go to 150, if you go to 100, if you have a starting point of 150 and you go to 100, but well, that's a drop of 50. A 50 represents a third of 150. 50 represents a third of 150. That tells us that there has been a drop of a third. This quantity has dropped by a third. If this quantity has dropped by a third, well, that's 33 percent. And the negative tells me that it's dropped. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more problem, and this time I won't explain so much. I won't explain it to this much detail. We're just going to do it. Let's do one other one. Let's say, let's say that, uh, let's look at two scenarios. Going from, going from 80 to 100 versus going from, going from 100 to 80. As you can see, the numbers are the same. What is different here is the point of reference. Here, we are going from 80. This is our point of reference. We are going from 100. This is our point of reference. That's the final point. The final point here is 100. The final point here is 80. The point of reference in the two scenarios are different, and that's what's going to make a difference. Let's do the calculation. Again, the formula is the same. The formula simply tells us that the percentage change is simply the change divided by the old number times 100. So in this case, the percentage change is going to be the new number, the change. Remember, change is always, why don't we put that in the formula itself? Instead of put, putting it down as a change, let's put it down here. New number minus the old number over the old number times 100. That's the formula. New number minus the old number times 100. So here, percentage change in this scenario is going to be the new number is 100 minus the old number, which is 80. As you can see, the new number is 100. The new number is 100 minus the old number, which is 80. And hence, we get a difference of positive 20. Positive 20 tells us, positive 20 tells us that the quantity has gone up in value. Of course, it's gone up. It's gone up from 80 to 100. Hence, the positive 20. 
here it will be here it will be negative 20 percent change here if you want to do it again new number the new number here is 80 the new number in this scenario is 80 minus the old number as you can see here we get positive 20 here we get a negative 20 the numerator is the same what is going to give us a difference in the answer when we're talking about the percentage changes is what do we compare this change with? Well, we compare the change with the starting point, point of reference. The starting point in this case, the starting point in this scenario is 80. The starting point in this scenario is 100. So here we take a difference of 20 and we divide it by 80. That's one quarter. That's one quarter. One quarter is 25%. That tells us that the quantity has gone up by 25%. If you go from 80, if we go from 80 to 100, 80 to 100, that's an increase of 20. And 20 is the increase of 20, and 20 happens to be one quarter of 80. One quarter of 80, which means the quantity has gone up by a quarter. Going from 80 to 100, the quantity has gone up by a quarter. A quarter is 25%. The only difference is that here we left it like that, which is why we got one quarter. We need to multiply it by, by, by 100 because otherwise we'll have one quarter. That one quarter needs to be multiplied by 100, and in order to get 25%, we need to get 25% here. Do you understand? And of course, I can't leave an equal sign here. If, I, if I'm going to if I'm going to multiply there by 100, we need to multiply this side by 100. I don't want to conf I don't want to confuse you like this. It should have been it should have been written like this: 100 minus 80, which is 20, over 80 times 100, which is same as 20 over 80, 20 over 80, which is one quarter times 100. And then you divide top and bottom by 4, 4 disappears and 100 becomes 25. Hence, it tells us that there has been an increase of 25%. Going from 80 to 100 is an increase of 25%, but going from 100 to 80 is not. Going from, going from 100 to 80 is not a drop of 25%. Let's find out what that is. So here, the change is going to be, right here, is negative 20 over the original number, which is 100, times 100, and the 100 drops out, and it's a drop, drop of 20%. It's a drop of 20%. Of course, it's a drop of 20%, because it's starting with 100 and you're going to 80. If you start from 100 and go to 80, that's a, that's, a, that's a drop of 20, and 20 is 20 is 20 percent of 100. So one more time, going from 100 to 80 is a drop of 20 percent, but going from 80 to 100 is an increase of 25 percent. As you can see, there's a difference there. And the difference is because of the fact that the point of references in the two scenarios are different. All right? I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll do a we'll do few problems. We'll do maybe two or three problems, maybe, maybe more. We'll do at least, at least two or three problems dealing with this formula, okay? We're going to continue with this thing from day number 31. We started the concept of uh, decimal fraction and, and, and percentages. Day number 31, and as, as, I st as it stands right now, my plan is to do it for the 10 days from 31 through day 40. We'll see how it goes. But tomorrow definitely we'll solve some problems dealing with the concept of percentage change formula. All right? Bye now.